we're back out again in the Peak District. Um, difference today is we have got one girl and her dog. Yay! <laughs> so, yeah, really looking forward to it tonight. It'd just be nice just to, to chill out, just the two of us. Uh, the last couple of camps have been with other people, which I've really enjoyed. It's been really cool, but it's just nice just to get a bit of um bit of me time but peace and quiet so looking forward to that weather's looking a little bit crap i have to say so 40 mile an hour winds on low ground 70 mile an hour up top and it's going to be chucking it down so limited on camping spots really um so xena uh, really doesn't like the wind either she she really freaks out so it's a shame because i had planned a camp elsewhere with some amazing views but it's going to be a bit exposed to that wind tonight so come somewhere nice and safe and trusted for a nice easy one and what i'm going to do today or tonight i should say is something a bit different we are going to share with you we like me and the dog like she can talk <laughs> um our tips for wild camping with dogs so I hope you find that useful and interesting and I will see you soon. Bye. So, out in the Peak District today, again. <laughs> um, but I've got my dog with me. Hang on, I'll turn it around. There she is, eating something. Always eating something, typical Labrador. <laughs> See, jumping away on a bone. So, first tip is don't forget the water. For tonight, I've bought a two litre bottle and a 500 ml bottle, and that will do us for dinner. A little bit of water for me, most of it is for her. I'd say probably a litre and a half of it is for her. Um, take a bowl, a little collapsible bowl, um, to put the water, maybe the food. I mean, she's a Labrador, she'll eat off the floor. Um, but yeah, do take a bowl with you. And know if there's any water sources on route, like rivers, etc., and streams, um, or whether it's been raining, you know, if there's going to be puddles about, then they can drink from that. So obviously, don't forget the food. So I take dried food for my dog. And if I'm on a multi-day hike, then I'll take some high protein snacks as well, like um, dried liver and fish, like uh, dried sardines, that kind of thing. Um, you can get them on the internet. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm just gonna give her food now. She's sat there waiting patiently. Go on. 
and remember that they will eat a little bit more as well because they're exercising the same as you running around loads more than they're going to be uh, usually so make sure you just take that little bit extra and it also just makes it a bit more of a treat for them so it's really important when you're camping with your dog that you keep them dry and she is a little bit wet especially on her belly so obviously that's going to make her colder it's going to make her smell wet dog smell <laughs> and it's also going to make the condensation worse in your tent so i always take this little microfiber towel um you know something that's light a little camping towel this was i don't know less than a tenner from sports direct but it's really really good so i'm going to give her a good dry down now so it's really important to make sure that they're warm and to know what kind of temperatures as well that your dog can work to. So I know with my dog that anything below 10 degrees at night, she's going to need um, some sort of coat on. And then as we're pushing down towards sort of freezing, then she gets a double layer. Um, anything below freezing for her, I won't take her out because she's, she's a 10 year old dog. So she, she does get a little bit arthritic now. Um, and it's just not fair on her to, to push her that far. So this, I highly recommend these, not so much for Labrador shapes, because I had to kind of tailor this, as you'll see, it's not that great, but this is from Equifleece. You'll see a lot of dogs running around the park with these little jumpers on, um, and it's a fleecy material, and it really is so water resistant. It barely soaks up anything um, and keeps her nice and warm. The other thing that she gets, is a nice big coat over the top of that as well so I'm just going to get those on her now she's on the search for food that's why she's snuffling about aren't you hey. she's a Labrador she eats everything <laughs> um, somebody once said to me you don't realize how much of the world is edible until you own a Labrador I tell you what it's true I mean, bless her, she does look like an idiot, I know this, <laughs> but um, I mean, if I had loads of money, I would buy different jackets until I found one that was really super good and fitted her really well, um, but I don't have lots of money, um, and I've already bought these, I mean the Equifleece things are like 50, 60 quid or something, they're not cheap, um, so I've probably spent easily about 100 quid on, on jackets already, um, but it keeps her warm. And it's not a fashion contest, is it, when you're out camping? Um, so I don't really care. <laughs> so if you're out camping with your dog, it's important to consider their sleep system as well. So foam is obviously a really good option for dogs because they can't puncture it. Um, for her at the moment, I've just got this three mil stuff, um, insulation foam, cheap as chips. Um, I have a big layer that sort of covers the bottom of the tent. Um, so I can benefit from it as well and then she's got her own little bit she also has this really old sleeping bag I mean this has got to be the crappiest sleeping bag in the world and I think I've actually been to a festival with this sleeping bag and been absolutely freezing it's so thin um, it's just obviously a synthetic one it is Mountain Life Traveller 50 probably one to avoid or maybe give to your dog <laughs> um, so that's her little sleep system so my other tips when camping with a dog are make sure you take it gradually so start off with nice fair weather camping in the summer um, get them used to being in a tent she actually started off with a big family sized tent where she had a lot more room to move about um, before she um, sort of came into this kind of tent but to be honest I mean she's pretty much bomb proof the other thing I would say another tip is make sure you know your dog's limits so I've already mentioned about temperature apologies for the day glow dog wandering past me by the way <laughs> might be a little bit distracting but never mind <laughs> it's real life um, but so for example I know she doesn't like wind and that's because on one of our earlier wild camping trips on Dartmoor, 
um, we got caught out with some gale force winds very unexpectedly um, and we were not in a sheltered position at all we were right on the top of a you know really big tour that's you know sort of on a par with with kinder so you, you can imagine it wasn't a pleasant experience and um, yeah I'd I'd not tested my tent at the time um, I was relatively inexperienced so I went into survival mode um, and I think she picked up on my anxiety levels so she doesn't like the wind now um, in terms of knowing your dog I would also say uh, things like sheep and livestock so know how your dog is going to react to to wild animals you know whether they're rabbits squirrels birds she's off because she can hear a bird <laughs> um, she's got a bit of a blast radius I call it with with sheep so I know if I see a sheep at a certain distance I know she's not going to bother with it even if she can see it she's not going to bother I know if if it's a bit closer she's going to go for that sheep and I will you know obviously get her on on her lead or hold her um because you know she, she, she just she won't do them any harm and she gets bored very quickly because she's she's an old dog but she will chase after them for you know maybe uh, you know 50 yards or something um and I don't like her to do that obviously it's not not good to scare the sheep Another tip, know your route. So for example, having styles on your route. Try picking up a 30 kilo dog when you're you know, a little girl like me. I can just about do it, but I wouldn't want to be doing it on you know, several occasions through a walk. Once or twice I can kind of manage. Um, roads, like she, she's great around city roads. She just plods along, she's not bothered at all, but country lanes, for some reason she wants to walk in the road <laughs> she doesn't want to walk nicely on the verge on this side of me oh no she wants to walk over there um so it's it's a little bit of a battle with her um on a country lane if there's um, a lot of traffic it's it that can be a bit of a pain so i would also suggest think about first aid kit um tick tweezers take tick tweezers with you if you're going in areas that are known for ticks where it's usually where there's like livestock grazing or sort of large wild animals like deer and horses and things like that um also think about um taking some bandage with you so most people in their first aid kit they just take some plasters plasters don't stick on dogs <laughs> so you might want to think about taking some some padding and some bandage um in your first aid kit if you check out my what's in my bag when I go hiking with my dog, you'll see a more detailed look of what's in my first aid kit. Medications. If your dog does take any medications, obviously do take them with you. Bug repellent. So, especially in the summer, it's really important to think about things like um, ticks and fleas and midges and all kinds of little critters that just want to bite your dog. <laughs> um, so for her, I use what's called a Seresto collar. I'll put the um, link to it in the description below. Uh, and that can stay on. I think it's around about like eight, nine months or something. And it just like maintains that protection for her. I also take some, I've got this um, natural spray with like lemon and lavender and all that kind of stuff that like mozzies and midges and things don't like um, and it's safe for dogs and it also conditions their coat. So I will also put that in the description below. So that's 10 tips for camping with dogs. I hope you found that useful and if you like this video please do watch my other ones and remember to click subscribe and hit the notification bell and hit the like button and all of those things because it really helps my channel grow i've just started out doing this whole youtube thing and um, people seem to be liking it and i really enjoy doing it so um we'll see where it takes me hey pooch hello Moon's up early tonight. Just, just see it faintly through that tree. It's a bit misty because it's clouds. Nearly a full moon. Not quite, I don't think. Yeah, the birds.
So for dinner tonight, I've got some fire pot, also pasta bolognese. I've not tried this before, so I'm interested to, to see what that's like. You will notice on my channel that I just cook loads of different types of food. So sometimes it'll be these sort of ready meals, and sometimes it will be my mum's um, dehydrated meals that she's very kindly made me. And sometimes it'll be proper cooking, like steak and beef burgers and things like that. So, uh, yeah, I do like my food <laughs> and I like it to be interesting. <laughs> um, in here, uh, this is some all day breakfast. Mm. Thank you, Gareth from Gareth and Zoe, <laughs> for getting me on to the uh, all day breakfast. I took it out of the can because the can wasn't, it didn't have a, a ring pull thing, um, and I couldn't be asked to take a can opener with me, so I've put it in that. Uh, so that's for breakfast. Or I've not actually eaten yet today. I'm terrible for not eating. <laughs> and then I just pig out at night. It's bad. So I'm just going to get dinner on the go now. Hey, you like dinner, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I've got in here, I've got my 1,000ml and my 750ml pot. And my little speedster stove which was in my last video because I'm just doing an overnighter so um, and because I'm camping for Pooch in the winter I have to carry a lot of extra layers for her <laughs> um, she, unfortunately she doesn't carry stuff I've tried that with her um, but she's too old for, for doing that so I have to carry everything for her <laughs> so lightweight and uh, yeah I'll uh, bring you back in a minute Okay, we have steam. It means we have boilage. Boiling water! Yay! Okay. Do out. Okay. Right. So, this says that you must fill to four line level four. This should, number shall be four, no less than four. Five is too much, three is too little, you must fill to four. <laughs> uh, that's a Monty Python thing, by the way, <laughs> in a very bad accent. It must be, wow, 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 that is hot. That was silly, wasn't it? All right, let me, um, okay, get me gloves. In fact, better than gloves, I have a trancheer handle. So, I'm going to attempt to pour this into there whilst also holding my phone and filming it. I am going to turn those handles around though because that's not going to work. Okay. She's doing it. I've done it. I've done it. I've managed to do it whilst filming it and everything. Pro things, you know. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, right, so I'm going to give that a bit of a, a stir around, leave that to sit. I'll probably put it inside my sleeping bag or something to keep it nice and warm and uh, utilise the heat. And uh, I'll let you know what it tastes like. Um, opening it with one hand is going to be ah, actually not too bad and uh, this is what it looks like inside okay so see what it tastes like they're good I have to say my mum's tastes better <laughs> no word of a lie <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Talk about having an audience whilst you eat. <laughs> Literally watches every single forkful. So it's about eight o'clock now, all snugly in the tent, got my thermals on, pooch is all chilled out. The rain has come early. It's supposed to be coming in about 11, it's half nine. 
Started rain about half an hour ago. Wind's starting to pick up a little bit in the trees above, but still fine down here. How nice is that sound though? raining now. Wind in the trees overhead. So the Met Office have updated the weather report. Now 50 mile an hour winds getting up to, so about 40 miles an hour at the moment and then getting up to 50 miles an hour towards uh, sunrise. Yay! It is really sheltered here so no problems but the wind is howling above. I'll be quiet and then you can hear it. Morning. So yeah, I didn't sleep that well last night. Um, I just wasn't tired for quite a long time. I remember it got to about one o'clock, um, and I was still watching stuff on the Kindle and not feeling very tired. And then the wind picked up, um, made it a bit difficult to get to sleep. And then I think about three o'clock, I decided to put my earplugs in, which was can you hear the wind? <laughs> So it's, it's been like that all night really. So yeah, I put, put the earplugs in and that was a lot better. I managed to get a good few hours sleep then. Um, but yeah, looking forward to getting home and getting a nice uh, hot breakfast. I um, yeah. I decided to eat my uh, um, all day breakfast <laughs> last night. Oops. <laughs> um, but yeah, if it wasn't so windy, It'd be a lovely morning outside. It's lovely and sunny, but it's very, very windy. So I'm just going to get changed and see you in a bit. So back at the car now, um, apologies, my battery died so I didn't get to film, you know, packing away the tent and leave no trace and the journey back. Um, yeah, because I was editing and stuff last night and rendering and uploading and doing all sorts of things. So, um, and my Kindle unfortunately didn't have any battery when I arrived, which is silly. Um, normally I always check, make sure everything is charged up, but hey ho, live and learn. So yeah, I killed my little power bank, um, which normally charges my phone four times. So it shows you how much um, <laughs> charge I did use during the night. Never mind. Um, yep, yeah, so I'm gonna go and get some Mackey D's as usual, and I'm in time for breakfast. So, <laughs> okay, hope you enjoyed this one and take care. See you on the next one.